Hello! Welcome to Malaya Bible Ministry. My name is Alfred and today we will look back to our Bible reading this week, Matthew chapter 21 to 25. I hope you're caught up with our daily Bible reading because we are just three chapters away from finishing the book of Matthew. Yay! And anyway, let's summarize. Chapter 21. We read about the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ, our Lord, riding on a donkey. Woohoo! And the people were very happy and laying down their clothes and, and palm branches. And they were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna in the highest! Amen! Chapter 22. We read about the marriage feast of a king. And then we read on that story that the king invited guests, but unfortunately, those guests refused to go to the wedding feast. And we also read um, on that story, there was a guest who did go to the wedding feast, but he, was not clothed. he wasn't clothed in wedding um, clothing. Um, so very interesting story there. And also, on chapter 22, we read about the very famous conversation of the Pharisees with Jesus and they asked Jesus, is it lawful for us to give tax to Caesar or not? And Jesus answered them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Very nice. And on chapter 23, we read about um, how Jesus rebuked the Pharisees this is a very um, interesting chapter because it's all about uh, Jesus was talking all about the, the leaders or the Pharisees and the Sadducees at that time. Um, Jesus was talking about the dangers of being strictly legalistic and hypocritical. Um, and Jesus gave us a warning for us who teach and preach the gospel, Jesus gave us the warning um, there that we shouldn't be too legalistic and we should not be hypocritical teaching the people what to do and then we don't practice it ourselves. So very, um, very um, strong chapter there from the Lord Jesus Christ. On chapter 24, and 25 actually both two chapters jesus starts to um talk about or warn warn us about the end times on chapter 24 jesus starts to warn us about the end times um, he talks about wars and famines and earthquakes and tribulations and then he continues on to chapter 25 on um the whole chapter 25 is written in red letters, which means the whole chapter is just dedicated to Jesus talking. And what was he talking about? It's all about what happens to people when he comes back for the second time. Wow, very amazing. He gave a comparison there. Are you a believer? Are you not a believer? What's going to happen to us if he comes back, if, if he finds us believing or not believing? Um, he also talks about faithful servant versus lazy servant. Um, talking about Christians already who are serving. Are they serving faithfully or are they serving in a lazy manner? So very interesting chapter there. All right. My favorite verse for the week is Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Let's see and find out what it says here. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This verse is an anchor for us who believe in Jesus Christ. This is a very strong anchor to where um, even if there's a storm in our life and the waves are beating on us, we anchor ourselves on this promise that Jesus' words will not fade away, it will not fail, 
It will not break. What he said will happen in its due time. I heard some people say, why are we reading the Bible? Christians are, are stupid. Christians are dumb because they, they base their life on the Bible, which, which is written, what, thousands of years ago. It's not relevant anymore. It, it doesn't apply to us anymore because our times has changed. You know what? Nope. <laughs> it hasn't changed. If you read from Genesis to Revelation, it hasn't changed. It's still the same. It's still evil. There's still adultery. There's still stealing, theft, murder. It's still the same. And the words written in the book of Genesis to the book of Revelations, if you read it, it still applies. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery. Be gracious. Be merciful. Extend your helping hand. Which of those are not uh, uh, applicable? Which, which are those does not apply to our lives today? It still applies. So, you know what? The Bible, the content of this, the words of God, Jesus Christ, His teaching, it's still applicable. You know why? Because heaven and earth will pass away, but His words will remain. It's a strong anchor. His promises are trustworthy because we have an unchanging God. And let that be an encouragement to you. Let that be a catalyst for you if you're growing cold in your uh, love life with Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus is trustworthy. He is there. His promise is true. It will happen. Sometimes it, it tarries. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't happen at the time we want it to happen. But it will happen. So hang in there. Just surrender to Jesus. Let Jesus hang on to you. Again, this is Malaya Bible Ministry. My name is Alfred. Stay put because we're going to play Matthew chapter 21 to 25. So if you missed anything this week, you can catch up on today. Thank you very much and God bless you. Matthew chapter 21 when they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord meets them and he will send them on immediately. Now this took place so that what was spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them and brought the donkey and the colt and laid their cloaks on them, and he sat on the cloaks. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Now the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. 
and those who were blind and those who limped came to him in the temple area and he healed them but when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done and the children who were shouting in the temple area hosanna to the son of david they became indignant and they said to him do you hear what these children are saying and jesus said to them yes have you never read from the mouths of infants and nursing babes you have prepared praise for yourself and he left them and went out of the city to bethany and spent the night there now in the early morning when he was returning to the city he became hungry and seeing a lone fig tree by the road he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves alone and he said to it no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you and at once the fig tree withered seeing this the disciples were amazed and asked how did the fig tree wither all at once and jesus answered and said to them truly i say to you if you have faith and do not doubt you will not only do what was done to the fig tree but even if you say to this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea it will happen and whatever you ask in prayer believing you will receive it all when he entered the temple area the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him while he was teaching and said by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority but jesus responded and said to them i will also ask you one question which if you tell me i will also tell you by what authority i do these things the baptism of john was from what source from heaven or from men and they began considering the implications among themselves saying if we say from heaven he will say to us then why did you not believe him but if we say from men we fear the people for they all regard john as a prophet and answering jesus they said we do not know he also said to them neither am i telling you by what authority i do these things but what do you think a man had two sons and he came to the first and said son go work today in the vineyard but he replied i do not want to yet afterward he regretted it and went and the man came to his second son and said the same thing and he replied i will sir and yet he did not go which of the two did the will of his father they said the first jesus said to them truly i say to you that the tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of god before you for john came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and prostitutes did believe him and you seeing this did not even have second thoughts afterwards so as to believe him listen to another parable there was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and he leased it to vine growers and went on a journey and when the harvest time approached he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his fruit and the vine growers took his slaves and beat one killed another and stoned another again he sent other slaves more than the first and they did the same things to them but afterward he sent his son to them saying they will respect my son but when the vine growers saw the son they said among themselves this is the heir come 
Let's kill him and take possession of his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine growers? They said to him, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the fruit in the proper seasons. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures a stone which the builders rejected? This has become the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and on whomever it falls, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about them. And although they sought to arrest him, they feared the crowd, since they considered him to be a prophet. Matthew chapter 22 Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who held a wedding feast for his son. And he sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fattened cattle are all butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their separate ways. One to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his slaves and treated them abusively and then killed them. Now the king was angry. And he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. So go to the main roads and invite whomever you find there to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Tie his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in that place. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him, along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and teach the way of God in truth and do not care what anyone thinks, for you are not partial to anyone. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it permissible to pay a poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their malice and said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Then pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And hearing this, they were amazed. And they left him and went away. 
On that day, some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and questioned him, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies having no children, his brother, as next of kin, shall marry his wife and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers among us, and the first married and died. And having no children, he left his wife to his brother. It was the same also with the second brother, and the third down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife of the seven shall she be? For they all had her in marriage. But Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, since you do not understand the Scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But regarding the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teachings. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commandments hang the whole law. And the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. And he said to them, Then how does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Therefore, if David calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to offer him a word in answer, nor did anyone dare from that day on to ask him any more questions. Matthew Chapter 23 Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore, whatever they tell you, do and comply with it all. But do not do as they do. For they say things and do not do them. And they tie up heavy burdens and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as their finger. And they do all their deeds to be noticed by other people, for they broaden their phylacteries and lengthen the tassels of their garments. And they love the place of honor at banquets and the seats of honor in the synagogues and personal greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by the people. But as for you, do not be called rabbi, for only one is your teacher. And you are all brothers and sisters, and do not call anyone on earth your father, for only one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called leaders, for only one is your leader, that is Christ. But the greatest of you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself 
shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven in front of people. For you do not enter it yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land and to make one proselyte. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple is obligated. You fools and blind men, which is more important, the gold or the temple that sanctify the gold? And you say, whoever swears by the altar, that is nothing. But whoever swears by the offering that is on it is obligated. You blind man, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering? Therefore, the one who swears by the altar swears both by the altar and by everything on it. And the one who swears by the temple swears both by the temple and by him who dwells in it. And the one who swears by heaven swears both by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a whole camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may also be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead man's bones and all uncleanness. So you too outwardly appear righteous to people, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous. And you say, if we had been living in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers, you snakes, you offspring of vipers. How will you escape the sentence of hell? Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from city to city so that upon you will fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who have been sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate, for I say to you, from now on, you will not see me until you say, Blessed 
is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24 Jesus left the temple area and was going on his way when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. But he responded and said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will mislead many people. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. And they will hand you over to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time many will fall away. And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will become cold. But the one who endures to the end is the one who will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get things out of his house. And whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those women! Who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days moreover pray that when you flee it will not be in the winter or on a sabbath for then there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now nor ever will again and if those days had not been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or he is over here, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will provide great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe them, for just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. But immediately, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky. And the powers of heavens will be shaken. 
and the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet blast, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. As soon as its branches become tender and sprouts its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah, for as in those days before the flood they were eating, and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. At that time there will be two men in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you must be ready as well. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Who then is the faithful and sensible slave whom his master put in charge of his household slaves to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that evil slave says in his heart, My master is not coming for a long time, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves, and he eats and drinks with those habitually drunk, then the master of that slave will come on a day that he does not expect and at an hour that he does not know. And he will cut him into and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 25 then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. But the prudent ones took oil and flasks with their lamps. Now while the groom was delaying, they all became drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there finally was a shout, Behold, the groom! Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish virgins said to the prudent ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. However, the prudent ones answered, No, there most certainly would not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the groom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. 
Yet later, the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, because you do not know the day nor the hour. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. The one who had received the five talents immediately went and did business with them and earned five more talents. In the same way, the one who had received the two talents earned two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have earned five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have earned more, two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. Repeat main 22. Repeat 22. Also, the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have earned two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. Now the one who had received the one talent also came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. And I was afraid, so I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you still have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You worthless, lazy slave, did you know that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed? Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. And, th and throw the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger, and invite you in, or naked, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of the least these brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed people, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, 
and you did not visit me? Then they themselves will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or as a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it for one of these, the least of these, you did not do it for me either. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life.